In this video, we're going to have a look at an amazing result, which says that the real numbers cannot be listed. And then we're going to have a look at proving this. But before we do that, we're first going to either remind ourselves or maybe introduce this concept for the first time of a countable set. So, definition is a countable set. A set is countable if it is finite or it is infinite but can be listed like the positive integers. And maybe a more formal way of saying this is that a set S is countable if there exists an injective function f from S to the positive integers. Okay, but I don't really want to talk too much about this definition. I want to have a look at this amazing result and prove it. So it's proved to a great German mathematician, Cantor. It was proved by him using what's known as a diagonalization argument. And so the proof is as follows. We're going to prove this by contradiction. So... We're going to suppose that R is listable, or can be listed. Right, so we're assuming the opposite of what we want to prove, and then we're going to work towards a contradiction. So suppose R is listable. So that means if R is listable, I can write it, well, as a list. So x1 is some real number, x2 is some real number, x3 is some real number, and so on. Okay. Now, I'm going to write my real numbers as a decimal expansion. So, I'm really not interested, actually, in the integer parts of my real numbers. I'm only interested in what comes after the decimal point. So here we have just some integer. Could be positive, could be negative, doesn't really matter. Could even be zero. But I don't really care about that. I'm only interested in what comes after that. So, these digits here in my decimal... Um, positions. I'm going to call them D11, D12, D13, D14, and so on. That should be enough. So, the first um, subscript here, 1, refers to X1, and the second subscript refers to which position it is after the decimal point. And so, I'm going to write out a few of these, and you'll see why in a moment. D23, D24, etc., I have D31, D32, D33, D34, and this should be enough now, D41, D42, D43, D44. And this continues on forever, obviously. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a real number using this sort of a matrix form here. So you can see that I have some sort of a matrix if I do this. I have a matrix of numbers here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the diagonal of this matrix. So I mean, by diagonal, I mean all these numbers here, along this diagonal. And I'm going to consider these in some way. And of course, these continue off to infinity forever. Now, I'm going to create this number. How am I going to create it? Well, I'm going to say, let y be some number. Again, I don't care about the integer part. I could put anything, but I'm just going to put for the sake of simplicity 0. So 0 point e1, e2, e3, e4, etc. And how am I defining these e1s? Well, E1 is specifically defined as, is by definition, is defined as D, sorry, DI, EI is defined as DI, I, DII plus 2. And this operation is going to be taken mod n. Sorry, not mod n, mod 10. Mod 10. So what do I mean by mod 10? Well, if you haven't really used modular arithmetic before, it's not too difficult. So mod 10 would mean that 0 stays as it is, 1 stays as it is, all the numbers up to 9 stay as they are, but when I get to 10, I loop back around to 0. When I get to 11, I loop back around to 1. When I get to 12, I loop back around to 2, and so on. Okay, so that's really what mod 10 means. So these, this operation here is taken mod 10. Good. Now, this here is a real number. Y is some real number. So, since Y is a real number, I can say since Y is real, that means that 
there must be some j, so there exists, this symbol means there exists, there exists some j, such that y is equal to xj. So what does this statement mean? All it means is if y is a real number, it should be contained in this list that I've got here. That's all this statement means. It's just a formal way of writing it with mathematical notation. If y is real, which it is, since y is real, then there has to be some j where I can find the x or the xj in this list here. Okay, good. So if that is the case, then that means that my number y, which is 0 0.e1, e2, e3, e4, I'm going to continue, I'm going to write the ejth digit, and then continue on. That should be equal to whatever xj is. Now, this is a bit hard to see, xj. That's a subscript, not times, so let me maybe write it like this, xj. That's better. So that should be equal to xj. But what's xj? Well, xj is going to be some integer part. I don't really care. It should be zero if they're equal, right? This integer part should be zero, but that's not the point. We're only considering the decimal points here. And that should be what? Well, we said that the first digit, the first subscript corresponded to what the x was. So the first subscript here should be dj1 and then j2 j3, j4, etc., all the way up to d, j, j, etc. Okay, off to infinity. So, what does this mean in particular? This means that I have two real numbers. Now, if they are the same, that means that these digits here should be the same. So that means in particular, this part here, e, j should be equal to d, j, j. So, that means that ej should be djj, okay, if x is equal to, sorry, xj is equal to y, xj is equal to y, that's pretty messy, let me write it again, if xj is equal to y, okay, but look up here, I defined my xi as DII. And I'm using J's here, but this is just really a, a, a just a letter. It doesn't really mean anything. I've defined XI as DII plus 2 modulo 10. So this can't be the case. Now, it's very important that I've used plus 2 here, and I haven't used something like plus 1, and I'll explain why that is in a minute. So, if EJJ is equal to DJJ, sorry, if EJ is equal to DJJ, and E well, we could call this j if we wanted to, ej is defined as djj plus 2 mod 10, well then, I can say that ej, but ej and djj differ by 2 mod 10. So if they differ by 2 mod 10, then they can't be the same. So therefore, ej is not equal to djj. And so therefore, this expression here, which is what my expression is for y, cannot be equal to this e, this xj here. So I can say therefore, xj is not equal to y. So what does that mean? That means therefore, there is no number j such that y is equal to xj. So what does this thing mean? This is just another way of saying that there is no number here that corresponds to y. That means y is not in this list. But y is a real number. But y is real and is not in my list. It's not in my list. So therefore I can say if y is not in my list and it's a real number, it's not in my list, therefore R can't be listable. Therefore R is not listable because I have a contradiction. My contradiction is that I suppose that R is listable. If R is listable, that means every single real number can be placed in this list here. But I've just shown that there is such a real number, namely R, that isn't in this list up here. 
there was no J which corresponded to Y here. So therefore, R is not listable. Now, I said something before where I said that this has to be, this, it's very important that I chose this to be plus 2. And why is that the case? So firstly, let me just say that we've completed our proof. Why is this the case that this plus 2 is important? Well, it's important because if I chose plus 1 mod 10, we would have a problem. Any other number, plus 3, plus 4, they would be fine, but plus 1 would be a problem. Why is that? Well, if I wrote 0 0.999999 and so on, this is also equal to 1.0000000, etc. Okay, it can be shown quite easily using um, geometric series. So, if that's the case, well, let me look at a particular... Let's just have a look here at the second one. So, 0 and 9, they differ by 1 mod 10. Why do I know that? Because if I take this operation, let's say that... Uh, let me just make a bit of space here. Let's say that I defined EI to be DII plus 1 mod 10. Mod 10. Okay, it's getting a bit squished here, but never mind. If I defined it as that, well, in this case, EI is 9. Sorry, DI is 9. DI is 9. So, DII is 9. So, EI is 9 plus 1, which is 10. But when I reduce this number mod 10, that gets me to 0 which I have here. So this wouldn't help my argument. But if I choose it as plus 2, this does help my argument. It does show eventually that there is no such j where y can be xj. In other words, y is not in this list. So that's why we chose or we didn't that's why we didn't choose plus 1, but we chose plus 2, which would work. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this proof and this theorem. It's really an amazing result. And thanks for watching.